is a slightly different video for me. Uh, I don't normally do synthesizer videos, mainly because I don't know. I just don't have a reputation for doing it, I suppose. And I mainly do violin ones because I'm better at that. But people have asked me to do the Deep Mind Six one, so here it is. So the first thing about the Deep Mind Six is I came with this thing, a European plug. I bought it from a shop in York. I have no idea what it came with. It had a box. A GB written on the side so that's slightly annoying luckily it's an IEC connector on the back it'll do it all cattle lead so any old lead will do so don't need that the second thing is it seems more substantial than I expected I think I, I tried the uh, I think it might have been a prototype or an early version at modular meets a couple of years ago and it seemed a bit sort of Behringer a bit sort of slightly wobbly but actually, it feels really nice. The, the, the sliders are quite substantial, the buttons feel solid. <laughs> Keyboard's nice. The mud wheels light up and the knobs are quite good. So, yeah, it feels nice. It feels good value for the, the money you pay for it. Granted, the demo version in the shop showroom had a faded cap that fell off. So how long it's going to stay like this is anybody's guess, but for the moment it seems nice. Things I like, generally, I think the display. I do like this display, it's really informative. If you change, if it just shows you the pitch thing there, if you're doing... It's not a proper oscilloscope, like uh, I think the one on the Minilog is. It's just a digital representation of what's going on. But it is very nice, it's informative, it tells you what's happening, and I think that's that's really, I do like it. And the three envelopes at the bottom, I think, is really helpful to know. And also it uses it to show you how far away the actual sliders are from what they're actually set at in the, in the synth itself, if you change patches. So the display is nice. It's a bit bitty in places, which we'll see later. It's slightly under resolution for some things, but generally it's it works well. I like it. It makes it nice and intuitive to work with if you're playing with the envelopes. You can see them move in real time like that. It's like quite nice, nice, nicely blow felt. Also, it shows you actual values here, so you can see the attack going up there. You can see the value in seconds. If I adjust the filter, <coughs> you can see it actually shows me the filter in hertz. Now, I'm not nerdy enough to actually know exactly what hertz I need my filter to be set at. I generally I do it by ear. The other thing I like, it's got well, a full set of sockets on the back here. It's got expression pedals, it's got a MIDI in and a MIDI through. MIDI through? Who, who knew those still things still exist? So literally the reason I did not buy a MIDI-log when I wanted one for Helicopter Quartet was that it didn't have a sustained pedal input. So this has a sustained pedal input. It's not currently connected, but that's just because it's set up for this demo. But I do like my sustained pedals and I find it very hard to play without one sometimes. My other favourite thing about this is the effects. I think the effects are what actually make this synth. They're very versatile, they're of high quality, and the routing is lovely. So you've got four effect slots here. Here we've got um, chorus, multi band distortion. I love multi band distortions where you can get the extra weight at the bottom end but still have it nice and reedy at the top. Uh, maybe coming from violin playing, I think. I use that on the violin. I used to have a patch for the owl pedal that did multi band distortion, which I ported myself. And then a TC Electronics reverb. Switch one X, yeah, they make really good reverbs. If you're going to get one, get one from them. So the Behringer did, and it's really nice. And you can move them around. Uh, the real thing where it really shines is you can change the routing. So you can have all in parallel, all two of them in parallel, like this, on series. And even at the far end here, there are some feedback on the stock where it goes parallel those two and it feeds back into number four. So you're gonna have fun with those. There's a little, there's a 30, 
30 hertz cutoff filter at the bottom which will stop you getting really nasty feedback effects which is also a nice touch and you can easily modulate those things from the mod matrix which is also it seems to be a co fairly common thing now it used to be really rare now it's 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 quite common so that's that's a good thing i think being able to modify these things so onto the mod matrix mod matrix you have eight slots on here as you can see uh, usual sort of thing. Here is where the resolution of the display goes a bit, gets a bit bitty. You can see that it's struggling a bit to display some of these things. You can make them out. You can make them out. It's a bit, um, it's struggling, but you can do it. But you can do it really. It's really intuitive to, to do. So you want to do mod. You want to say the, uh, want to make the mod wheel do something. So that you just hold the mod down and the mod wheel, and then I want it to do the um, filter envelope. You just hold that. Really quick, really quick to get these things up. And if I'm running them up, so it's really fast. I think that's nice. And yeah, it also works for after touch. So you can hold down mod and hold down the key, and it says pressure there. And then mod filter frequency. <laughs> that applies all across there I and mean, you can spin the wheel and this is where the data entry thing goes well as well because you can turn it to none very quickly you just spin it down the top button there if you want to cancel one rather than spinning the wheel around which is so that it's a, it's a silly little touch that i don't and i was quite skeptical of it at first it, why is that there but actually when you get to use it it's great because you can just do this with it and when you're naming patches again if you want a space just zap the wheel down there it becomes a space it's fantastic <laughs> So, yeah, those are things I do like about it. Uh, the arpeggiator is uh, is decent. So that's your normal arpeggiator. What you can also do, you can actually put chords into it. So you hold down one key and it plays an arpeggiated chord. And you can define what those chords are. So that's quite handy and you can easily sort of you record a chord. So you say I just want, let's just put in a basic sort of triad. That. It'll do those over one, two, three, four octaves as well. So that's, that's quite a nice feature, I think. So you can have one one hand chords. Um, that's quite nice for me if you're playing. If I'm playing violin and I want to control this from a foot pedal, so I could put a, an arpeggiator pattern that I like on a foot pedal and trigger that from the foot from the bass from the foot pedal rather than having to play an arpeggio on the keyboard. So things like that are really good. It's you only allowed one of those per patch, but and you, it's fiddly to change it as you saw just then in the middle. So you wouldn't probably wouldn't do that in the middle of performance. So you might have to have it play your chords normally, and then put the chord on and change it that way. Other thing on the arpeggiator, the there's a hold button here, which is, but you need to hold it down before it holds triggers. And the reason for that is because it doubles at a tap tempo. So you need to hold it down before it latches. And you need to watch the button, which I find slightly annoying. I'd rather just sort of hit the button and know it was latched. So not keen on that. I think that could have been another button there. I know you're trying to save space and it's nice. To, you know, it works good. But you see, you normally would do that in effect it to stop and it doesn't. So you have to hold it down. Bit annoying. I understand why it's there, but it's still annoying. There's a polychord mode where it'll play a single chord. It's yeah, I suppose it's useful if you if you're playing in a band and you just want to play some music chords easily because these can be signed to different chords. I think you're allowed four per patch. Uh, I didn't find it that useful to be honest. 
maybe I will in the future, I don't know. Uh, it's not the sort of thing I tend to use, I tend to do sort of... Because I like to vary chords while I'm playing them, I probably find that less useful. But if you want block chords, maybe it's more helpful. One of the nice things in the mod matrix is note off velocity. You can change the if I put the uh, put the uh, release up a bit, so the, the how quickly you release the note can be used in the mod in the mod matrix. So you can set that to the envelope release. So you get a softer release <coughs> if you take your hand off the keyboard gently. Nice touch, not a lot of synths have that. Uh, the Blowfoot will do it. The uh, my Proteus Rack synths will do it. Most of the, I think the, uh, the 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 Waldorf cues and things also do that. But it's not that common these days, and that's no really nice. You're not going to use it a lot, but it's there, and you know it's it's a handy thing to have. Not to be sneezed at, I think. Uh, other thing I like keyboard. It's a nice. It's actually a nice keyboard. <laughs> It's a full size three octave keyboard. If I have one criticism of it, it's that the aftertouch is a bit heavy, you need to push it down quite hard. And sometimes you only really get to the bottom of the aftertouch if you actually use it like that. Two keyboard, two with two fingers on, or more on the key, two hands on the keyboard. In fact, you can see that's actually bringing in the multi band distortion, which you've never heard before because I can't hit it hard enough with one hand. Uh, I don't know if there's a way to adjust that. Maybe I need to check that. Look in the calibration. There is a calibration menu. It might be in there. The edit buttons are slightly confusing. Um, I suppose they seem obvious if you're an, an UI designer. But um, when I'm working, so what you do, you push the edit button there. And then you're working on this screen. And then you have to remember where the edit button is that you're supposed to press to turn it off again. You can use the prog button to turn it off again, actually. But... Uh, I suppose it means you can go from edit to edit. So I can go from edit from the LFO to edit in the ARP. But I, I, I sometimes find myself thinking, push it, looking which edit button have I got. And then they, they light up, it's probably just me being stupid. The, uh, the envelopes are all one set of sliders. Your amplifier envelope, filter envelope, and your third envelope. And they're all on here. It's slightly fiddly. It's not a big problem to be honest, particularly as you can see them on here all the time anyway. It's not like they disappear in front of you, like like if they were on sliders and didn't have that display. So the display really helps you out here. Uh, other things, that's a good, the good things about the envelope, curves are quite good. You can make some nice good shapes with the curves. You can do some quite fun things. So I'm particularly fond of the release curve where you can have it tail off like that. Yeah, the oscillators. The oscillators are quite limited. You basically got oscillator one, which has sawtooth and a square with pulsive modulation, and oscillator two, which is basically a square wave with its own again with its own pulse width modulation, which sounds really limiting, and I suppose it is if you compare it to I suppose this other synth in that price range, which is a mini log, which has sort of the usual squares, squares triangles and things. It makes this synth good for particular things, I think. And those things tend to be sort of fairly dark wave. 
type type sounds. So you find if I get a perm, and then it patch on there. So it's your basic saw right there. You can turn that off and have nothing. You can make the filter oscillator. You want the filter to oscillate. That works. That's that. The uh, the tone mod oscillators are actually quite nice on the. Because it's asymmetric. You can see the display there. You've got a narrow one, a wide one, a narrow and a wide one. So it's quite versatile for what it is. You've actually got, ironically, you've got more waveforms on the LFO than you have on the voice oscillators. A bit odd, but there you go. So I think you'll find with a lot of the sound shaping you do with this is on the effects level. Which might be odd for some synthesis. Me as a as a violinist that works with pedals, that seems quite natural to me. Because you see what things like amp model things. So it's bloody chorus into that. It's got three and four tap delays, which are good. You got, so you got uh, delay reverbs as well, which, which save you some mod slots. Push the effects button again, you get the um, various different things you can change on the effects level. That's the reverbs. Uh, these abbreviations are a bit confusing, but it does explain them at the bottom there. So you can see PD is pre delay. You push the effects again. That's the chorus. Well, that's the... So, yeah, this is where again where the display gets a bit sort of bitty. But it's enough to understand what's going on, it's explained down at the bottom, so it's not a big problem. It, it looks a bit it's where the display looks more shabby than you might expect on a higher end synth but hey this is not an expensive synth for a six voice analog you know, it's so but things out like it has a fan. Uh, literally the only analog synth I have that has a fan. I'm not quite sure why. You can see there's a grill at the back there where the, where, where the air comes out. You can probably hear it all the time. I've been speaking in the microphone here because it's quite a nice microphone. It's a bit strange. You can turn it on and off at different values. The thing there, fan speed. I mean, to be honest, if you're recording, obviously you're recording off the jacks. If you're at a gig, it's going to be so loud you're not going to hear it. So it's a bit of a small niggle, to be honest, but it does feel a bit weird doing a video and there's this fan noise going all the time. 
And I don't know if I dare turn it off. It's quite a warm day here in England. Probably best not to. <laughs> I think that's where it's going to get most users so sort of pads and very dark ambient background sounds that's where this thing really shines and if you're more used to playing with the uh, effects rather than playing with the oscillators to get the sound you want i think that's what you'd use the effects have got eqs and things in there and there's a high pass filter as i said that's quite useful um it's got a nice the poly detune there so which is also on the mod matrix so for instance on that one you could say go on the mod matrix on the after touch and I'm going to want, I want that So if you want to do Blade Runner, yeah, might be quite fun. <laughs> there's, a, there's a bass boost thing in here somewhere, which I always lose. Which I think is just an EQ thing, but it, it works quite well. If you've got a bit of big bass effect, you just want a big more, it's going to be a bit more heft. If you can find it, it's in here somewhere. It might be on the oscillator menu. So the menus can be quite hard to find and sometimes you have to push them two or three times. Another ones you have to hold them down and you get different options as well. So I hold this down I get this thing move off and, and that disappeared too quickly. I didn't even know what that said because it wasn't well on the resolution. So things like that can get a bit fiddly. Generally yeah it's quite fun. It's a nice thing. I think it's worth the money it has its quirks it has its limitations but so does everything have a play with it in the shop if you like it thanks for watching uh if you like the more synth videos i could do more synth videos i tend to do a lot of playing on the synth videos because i want to explain what's going on if you want to go and hear them there are loads of videos that say no talking go and watch those if you want to hear it playing personally i would rather go and watch videos of people actually playing it in a song in a piece which i will probably do with this Subsequently, we'll see us on Main Stewart. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Goodbye.